Helen here. Welcome to my Mousy Makes podcast. I'm coming to you from Durham in the northeast of England and I'm really happy you've come to join me today. I am going to chatter on today just about some of the things I've been making or planning to make and also we'll just go out and about to a couple of different places as well today. So sit back and relax. Uh, last week I said I was going to try and make my podcast a bit shorter than the previous one and it ended up being slightly longer. So today I really am going to try and make it a little bit shorter. Um, and my aim all along was to try and make podcasts of about 20 minutes in length, just roughly, um, because 20 to 30 minutes is my favourite length of podcast. Um, although if it's a good podcast, then I just watch it in chunks, probably throughout a day or over a couple of days. So it doesn't really matter too much. But I just thought that, yeah, 20 to 30 minutes would be good. So um, what I'm going to talk about today, I am going to talk a little bit about my six makes challenge that I'm doing along with a few other podcasters, uh, which I introduced to you a couple of weeks ago, I think. And... So I'm just going to show you where I'm up to in that. Um, I've been, we've had a visitor staying with us uh, for the first time in months this week. So we have been out to one or two places. And so I thought I'll just take you along to a couple of those places I've been to. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, and I'm just going to update you on the Enchanted Forest make-along that I'm joining in with at the moment as well. So let's get started. The six makes, well, I have finished one of them because it was actually quicker than I thought it was going to be. I've half finished another one and I've started one other one. So the finished one first is this embroidery. I've got this embroidery kit, which I just hadn't started, um, which is the sort of dandelion head, fluffy dandelion clock. Yeah, dandelion clock, that's right. Um, I'm really, really pleased with the way it's turned out. Uh, I'm glad I had this motivation just to get me to do it because it just been sitting there in its box. I hadn't really done satin stitch very much before. And I think when I started it off, it was a bit messy. But actually, as I got further and further down the stalk of the dandelion, it, it definitely does get a bit neater. So it's not too bad. Uh, the little tiny little running stitch, single running stitches were easy as can be. Uh, and then I just had hundreds of French knots to do. And I really, really loved doing the French knots. Um, but I would say that if you don't like doing French knots, it's not a, not the project for you. <laughs> so, but, um, I, you know, I, it was really good practice at doing French knots. Actually, it's not quite finished now. I'm holding it up here. I can see I haven't put a, a backing on it. But, you know, it's effectively it's finished. So... Right, so that's the, that's the uh, finished one, and then the half finished one um, are the socks. They're just plain socks that I'm doing using this yarn that I bought from the Yarn and Yarns online shop, and I really love the yarn. I've never used this yarn before, and I've already completely forgotten what it's called. Hang on, the label might be here. Um, oh yes, it's this uh, Shopple. Zauber ball crazy and the colourway is garden party that's right and it's really lovely the sock is turning out really nice so I've got one completed sock and then one uh actually yeah a cuff one cuff done because it's a cuff down sock so there we go I'm really pleased with how that one is looking so half finished and then the other one, the third thing that I'm doing, uh, which is in this big bag here, is the uh, Nuke, Nuke sweater, short sleeved top and yeah, well actually I'm going to show you a photo now rather than me trying to get this out of the bag, but I am really, really pleased with the yarn that I chose. Again, it wasn't yarn that I'd used before, Cascade 220, it's an iron weight, uh, it's just a super wash, 100% wool but it's super wash um, and I'm really really pleased with it, lovely colour and it's nice and soft as well, so great. 
it's also a bit of a risk when you buy a yarn online, isn't it? And you can't actually feel it. If you haven't had it before, you don't know exactly what it's going to be like. But this is fine. So that's really good. I'm very pleased with that. Uh, okay, then. So the other projects uh, just haven't been started. But um, in here, I've, I've chosen... I've got things ready for the mittens, the butterfly... Uh, fingerless gloves yes that's what I'm doing I've got the needles ready in this bag and I've chosen the yarn from my stash this is oh I knew I'd forget if I didn't go oh no I've got a label in here that's okay <laughs> Devonia is from John Arban Textiles and it's Devonia four ply so actually I haven't put the other I need to put some oh mohair fluffy for the little butterflies Otherwise, and I'll put the book that the um, pattern is in, in the bag as well. So that's all ready to go. So as soon as I fancy starting those, it's it's all more or less ready. And then the fifth make is is going to be the little mini patchwork um, pin cushion from Emma Jones Vintage Sewing. I think that's what it's called. And all I've done for that is I haven't chosen fabric, but I'm just going to use from my stash here. And I have bought myself some hexiform squares of the right size because that's what Emma was using on her tutorial and I've never used them before and thought that would be interesting. Um, teeny tiny little three quarter inch squares. So and I've got because some of the um, parts are rectangles, I think, and then there's the base to do. So I just bought a sheet of this hexiform stuff. Uh, for those so I'll be interested to you know do something new and use that and I've also bought again another thing I haven't done in my very limited experience of patchwork is to use a fabric glue pen and again that's that's what Emma was using in her tutorial so I just thought I'd give it a try uh, I mean I quite like tacking little uh, you know fabric onto the uh, patchwork shapes but I, I just wanted to give it a go I wanted to try something new so, so that's kind of nearly ready to start. Um, and then the final thing, oh yeah, the, the sixth, my sixth make is going to be the crocheted autumn wreath, a toadstool wreath actually it is, but yeah, a little wreath. And I haven't put anything together for that. I've got the book with the pattern in, but I haven't started that one at all. So yeah, so that's where I'm up to on the six makes. So before I chat any more, I'm just gonna um, take you on a little visit to my mum's garden. My mum lives in Whitley Bay, which is about mm, sort of 20 miles from where I live and right on the coast, in case you don't know Whitley Bay. And she has got um, a beautiful little garden. It's very small, but she has packed such a lot into it. And when I was visiting there uh, earlier, well, the, yeah, last week, last Monday, um, I decided it was looking so good I would take a few little videos of it. And I think I might have even caught my mum a couple of times as well so you can see see her. So I hope you're going to enjoy having a little wander around her lovely little garden.
So isn't it lovely? She has a really, really nice garden and, and she loves it and spends a lot of time in it. She does have somebody to come and help her um, every couple of weeks, but um, she, she does a lot of it herself. She's doing really well. Okay, so I promised you a little update on the um, Enchanted Forest Make Along that I'm doing. That's an Instagram challenge that was uh, suggested by Dawn's Dawn's Days. Uh, um, that's that's her name, Dawn. She's called Dawn and Jeanette, who are Dawn, at Dawn's Days and at Crafty Clegg Creations. I'll get it right eventually. Um, so great idea. And of course, once I decide to do something, I don't do it. You know, I, I don't just dabble. I, I go the I go the whole way. So so I've been getting quite carried away with it. Uh, but having a lot of fun, so it's fine, isn't it? Isn't it fine if I'm having a bit of fun? And, and giving other people a little bit of uh, a smile as well. So, so just a brief outline of the story so far. First of all, in my garden, there appeared a tiny little toadstool, this one here. And when I went to look the next time, that it had become, or beside it, had sprouted a great big toadstool house. Didn't know who lived in it, but it was just sitting there. with its little flowers around it and looking very pretty. And then along came a little gnome, a gnome with a red hat, and he's called Ragnar. Was a little bit um, curious about the toadstool house, wondered who lived in. He, he knocked on the door, but there was no reply. And uh, so uh, along came his friend, who was, who was the next one to come along, who was Oscar, Orange Hat. And they both, um, they, they kind of just kept their eye on the toadstool house, but saw no coming, saw goings. And uh, and then their little friend, uh, Fairy Mouse, came along. So his little little friend, Fairy Mouse. And she she was feeling a bit shy as well. And this, she said, oh, no, we can't really just go and knock on the door. Let's let's just let's just keep watch and see if anybody comes along. And then maybe we can spot who um, who's living there. Uh, and along came their other friend, the third gnome, who has who's called Magnus Mustard Hat and just joined the crew. So they all just stood and watched. And in this story so far, they do a lot of standing and watching. They're not they're not very um, <laughs> they're not very good at uh, um, actually taking action on things, as you'll see. Or you might already know if you've been watching on Instagram. Uh, so and then then they spot sitting on a I'll put them down uh, on a tree stump outside the toadstool house. Um, they see a little little character called Froglet. And they think, oh, that's probably who lives in the house. He's about the right size. So so they just stand quietly and watch him. They don't go and speak to him. And then um, the next thing that we see is a fairy ring appears in the garden. Now, fairy rings are very magical. And, you know, all kinds of things can happen, especially if you go into the middle of a fairy ring. Anyway, as, as the gnomes in Fairy Mouse are watching, uh, Froglet hops off his tree stump and goes and sits on one of the little toadstools in the fairy ring. And um, and the the uh, the crew that are watching, they know that something weird might happen, but it's, so they're willing him not to jump into the middle of the ring. All this time, watching them is a rather mysterious man, which I showed you last time. He as I think I might have told you, was quite the fiddliest felt thing I have ever made. It was so hard to stuff it. I'll probably show you a picture now of, of me uh, attempting to stuff it or sewing it up. Anyway, he has been quite successful in the end. Actually, as part of the make along, um, it's uh, all the things are supposed to be made from yarn. Um, so he doesn't quite fit with the challenge. I just had seen him in one of the books. One of the books I showed you the first time I showed you my craft room books, actually, um, I decided I wanted to make him. He was called the Kidnapper in, in that book, but I've called him Bad Man because he just looks a bit bad and he's got this ominous bag in his hand here as well. So, yeah, so he seems to be hiding in the undergrowth at the moment, just watching what's going on. Anyway, 
while the gnomes and the fairy mouse are still watching, Froglet jumps into the middle of the fairy ring. And they just shocked. Oh no, what's going to happen now? They, they barely blink their eyes when Froglet has changed into this tiny mouse, which I don't think I did show you before. It's just turned into a teeny tiny mouse. Oh no. And before the gnomes and fairy mouse can spring into any kind of action, up comes a bad man and grabs the mouse and puts him into his little bag and runs off with him. Oh my goodness. And the gnomes and fairy mouse just, well, they don't know what they're going to do. Um, so <laughs> uh, I think I know what's going to happen next. I have some more characters to, to bring into the story. Um, and the first one I think that's going to come in is this one, which I have to say I didn't make especially for the uh, this Enchanted Forest make-along, but I would like to have him in the story. So he's a little crocheted bee and he's he's called the bee of knowledge. OK, so you can maybe think there that perhaps the bee is going to try and help the little group sort out the problem with Froglet being turned into a mouse and run off with the bad man. Uh, so that's the Bee of Knowledge. Uh, there is going to be uh, this snail in it. He is called the Great Rainbow Snail. Uh, I had a lot of fun making him and I love his little face there. I cannot remember the maker, uh, the designer I mean. I'm the maker. I can't remember that, but I will put it either on the screen or below or both. OK, so the Great Rainbow Snail is going to come into the story. Uh, also, right, OK, this is another thing that's not actually made from yarn, but it is made from wool because it's made from 100% wool felt. The beautiful hand dyed wool felt made by Hannah from Hannah's Field. And this is a moth. So it's it's her it's Hannah's newest design. You can buy the pattern on Etsy. No, sorry, on Folksy. She's on Folksy. Uh, this is I've called this moth Martha the Magical Moth, and she's got extra sparkly bits on that weren't well. You can see in the photo, hopefully. And she is also she's stuffed with lavender, um, so she smells very nice. And hopefully will repel any moths that try to come anywhere near her, at least. And I'm really pleased with her. It was slightly complicated. Probably you need to be more than a beginner to try it. But it was I mean, it wasn't that hard. The instructions are really, really good. Uh, but it's one of those things where you have to follow the instructions. You have to have things the right way up or lined up correctly. It's a very well thought out pattern. Uh, really lovely. So Martha the Magical Moth is going to be coming into the story as well. And then the final character that I've made so far uh, is this little pixie. Again, I'll put the name of the designer and where you can get the pattern in the description box below. Um, I am really pleased with her though. It was an, again, it was, it was a really nice pattern. I love the embroidery on her little dress and she's got a little petticoat underneath there. Making the arms in particular was very, very fiddly. Um, and yeah, when you've got, I think, was I going on six stitches? Six stitches round and round, or was it eight? It wasn't more than eight anyway. Um, so that is quite fiddly. And um, one of the arms I have to start again because it started going thinner and thinner, which wasn't quite right. Um, so I think she's going to come into the story anyway. I haven't, I haven't, in my head, I haven't got to the end of the story. I've just got a vague idea of where we're going with the story. I don't know, it might, might carry on for months, might it? Uh, no, no, it won't. Right, okay then. So uh, that, I think, is all I'm going to say about the Enchanted Forest make-along for today. But I will be back with um, another update soon. Or you can follow along on Instagram and see the photos that I'm not posting every single day, but yeah, every 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 other day or it depends. Depends how I'm going with the story and taking photos for it. Uh, oh, I've also been. I've just 
spotted my uh, one of my drawing books. I've also been um, having a go at drawing some picture pictures of the Enchanted Forest. So I've been using the uh, photos that I've taken as a kind of a guideline for what to draw. But yeah, I mean, they're not brilliant, but I really like doing them. And it's just making me practice drawing a bit more. So there we are, Enchanted Forest. So I think just before we go, I'm just going to take you on another little trip. Uh, this time to actually down to the sea in Whitley Bay. So we saw my mum's garden, which is in Whitley Bay. Um, but we did, before we went to visit her, we went down to the sea and um, spent a little bit, little bit of time on the beach. And it wasn't a particularly nice day. It was a bit of a grey day. Never mind. Um, and then we went for lunch at um, a fish and chip restaurant that it that was voted best fish and chip shop restaurant in the UK in 2020. So our expectations were high and we were disappointed. It was absolutely fantastic. And the first time that any of us had eaten in a restaurant, inside a restaurant, for well over a year, so since before the pandemic. So it was really exciting and we had a really lovely time together. So here we go, a little, little view of my trip to the seaside last week. for today but well, thank you ever so much for spending time with me again and um, I hope you'll come back again soon so until I see you again take care and keep busy okay bye <laughs>